Warning, the following stories you are about to hear are truly disturbing. Make sure to subscribe or I will come for you. It all started innocently enough. We were a group of five friends looking for a thrill to break the monotony of our mundane lives. We often delved into the world of urban exploration, seeking out abandoned places to satisfy our thirst for adventure. That's when we heard about the old manor on the outskirts of town, whispered about in hushed tones as the most haunted place in the area. The stories surrounding the manor were as chilling as they were intriguing. Tales of inexplicable noises echoing through the halls at night, shadowy figures glimpsed in the windows, and an oppressive atmosphere that seemed to weigh down on anyone who dared to step foot inside. It was the perfect setting for our next escapade. One fateful evening, gathered around a flickering campfire, we broached the subject of exploring the abandoned manor. Excitement rippled through the group as we discussed the rumors and legends that shrouded the place in mystery. But it was Alex who suggested the idea that would change everything. Hey, why don't we take a Ouija board with us? He said, a mischievous glint in his eyes. The suggestion sent a shiver down my spine. Ouija boards were not to be trifled with, everyone knew that. But the prospect of contacting the otherworldly inhabitants of the manor was too tantalizing to resist. Against my better judgment, I found myself nodding in agreement. Caught up in the thrill of the moment, we made plans to meet at the manor the following Saturday night, armed with flashlights, cameras, and the Ouija board. As the days passed, anticipation gnawed at the edges of my mind, mingled with an undercurrent of unease. But I pushed aside my doubts, eager to experience the adrenaline rush of exploring the unknown. When the night finally arrived, a heavy fog blanketed the landscape, lending an eerie ambiance to our surroundings. The manor loomed before us, its crumbling facade barely visible through the mist. Excitement and trepidation warred within me as we approached the imposing structure, in Anna each step bringing us closer to the heart of darkness. Little did we know, we were about to unleash forces beyond our wildest nightmares, plunging ourselves into a night of terror from which there would be no escape. Entering the manor felt like stepping into another world. The air was thick with dust and decay, and the floorboards creaked ominously beneath our feet. Despite the chill in the air, a bead of sweat trickled down my spine as we made our way deeper into the bowels of the abandoned building. With trembling hands, Alex produced the Ouija board from his backpack the wooden surface etched with cryptic symbols and letters. We gathered in a circle, our breaths coming out in ragged puffs of mist in the cold, damp air. The flickering beams of our flashlights cast eerie shadows on the walls, heightening the sense of foreboding that hung heavy in the atmosphere. As we placed our fingertips on the planchette, a hush fell over the group. My heart hammered in my chest, and a knot formed in the pit of my stomach. The weight of the unknown pressed down on us, suffocating in its intensity. Is there anyone here with us? Alex called out into the darkness, his voice barely above a whisper. For a moment, nothing happened. The silence stretched on, punctuated only by the sound of our own breathing. But then, Ever so slowly, the planchette began to move beneath our fingertips, gliding across the surface of the board with an otherworldly grace. My breath caught in my throat as I watched, my mind struggling to comprehend what was happening before my eyes. 
It felt as though a cold hand had gripped my heart, squeezing it tight with fear. Letters began to spell out before us, forming words that sent shivers down my spine. I am here, the board spelled out, each letter etched into my mind like a dagger. A chill wind swept through the room, extinguishing our flashlights in a flurry of darkness. Panic surged through me, threatening to overwhelm my senses as the oppressive weight of the unknown bore down on us. But then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the movement ceased, and the air grew still once more. We sat in stunned silence, our minds reeling from the encounter with the other side. Little did we know our innocent curiosity had unleashed something far more sinister than we could have ever imagined. And as the night wore on, the true horrors of the manor began to reveal themselves in all their terrifying glory. After the unsettling encounter with the Ouija board, a palpable tension hung in the air, thick and suffocating. We exchanged nervous glances, the weight of our predicament settling like a leaden cloak upon our shoulders. But despite the gnawing fear that twisted in the pit of my stomach, a morbid curiosity compelled me to press onward deeper into the heart of darkness. As we ventured further into the manor, the walls seemed to close in around us, the shadows twisting and writhing like living things. Every creak of the floorboard sent my heart racing, each whispered breath echoing in the stillness of the night. It wasn't long before we stumbled upon a room that seemed frozen in time, as though the very essence of the past clung to its walls like a ghostly shroud. Dust-covered furniture lay scattered about, the remnants of lives long since forgotten. But it was the painting that hung on the far wall that caught my eye, its eyes seeming to follow our every move with a malevolent gaze. The figure depicted within its frame was shrouded in darkness, its features twisted into a grotesque mockery of humanity. As I stared into those empty eyes, a chill swept through me, sending shivers racing down my spine. It felt as though the painting itself was alive, its malevolence seeping into my very soul like poison. But before I could tear my gaze away, a voice echoed through the darkness, icy and dripping with malice. Leave this place, it hissed, sending a wave of terror crashing over me like a tidal wave. With trembling hands, I reached out to grab my friends, desperate to flee from the encroaching darkness that threatened to consume us all. But as I turned to leave, a sudden gust of wind slammed the door shut with a deafening bang, trapping us within the confines of the haunted manor. Panic surged through me, threatening to overwhelm my senses as the walls seemed to close in around us, suffocating in their embrace. And as the night wore on, the true horrors of the manor revealed themselves in all their terrifying glory, leaving us trapped in a nightmare from which there would be no escape. Trapped within the confines of the haunted manor, our sense of time began to warp and distort, each moment stretching out into an eternity of unrelenting terror. The oppressive atmosphere weighed heavily upon us, like a suffocating blanket that threatened to smother our very souls. With every step we took, the darkness seemed to grow thicker, swallowing us whole in its inky embrace. Shadows danced along the walls, twisting and contorting into grotesque shapes that sent shivers racing down my spine. But it was the whispers that haunted me the most, their voices echoing through the empty corridors like the anguished cries of the damned. They spoke of unspeakable horrors, of pain and suffering beyond comprehension.
their words worming their way into my mind like a cancerous growth. As we stumbled blindly through the labyrinthine halls, a sense of dread settled over us, like a heavy fog, obscuring our thoughts and clouding our judgment. Every sound sent us into a panic, every shadow a potential harbinger of doom. And then, just when I thought things couldn't possibly get any worse, they did. In the dim light of a flickering candle, we stumbled upon a room unlike any we had seen before. The air was thick with the stench of decay, and the walls were lined with grotesque symbols that seemed to writhe and twist with a life of their own. But it was the figure that stood in the center of the room that chilled me to the bone. It was tall and gaunt, its features obscured by the darkness that seemed to cling to it like a shroud. Its eyes burned with a malevolent light, and a cruel smile played across its lips. I wanted to run, to flee from the horror that stood before us, but my feet were rooted to the spot, paralyzed by fear. And as the figure stepped forward, its shadow stretching out like a twisted mockery of life, I knew that our fate was sealed. For we had awakened something beyond our understanding, something ancient and malevolent that hungered for our souls. And as the night wore on, the true horrors of the manor manifested themselves in all their terrifying glory, leaving us trapped in a nightmare from which there would be no escape. As the malevolent entity loomed before us, its presence seemed to sap the very air from our lungs leaving us gasping for breath in its suffocating grasp. We were powerless against its otherworldly might, mere insects caught in the web of its insatiable hunger. With a voice that echoed through the depths of my soul, the entity spoke, its words dripping with venom and malice. You have trespassed upon my domain, it hissed, its eyes blazing with a fierce intensity that sent a chill racing down my spine. I could feel the fear coursing through my veins like a river of ice, threatening to consume me in its icy embrace. But even in the face of certain doom, a flicker of defiance burned within me, a stubborn refusal to surrender to the darkness that threatened to engulf us all. With trembling hands, I reached for the only weapon we had left, the Ouija board that had brought us to this nightmarish place. It seemed like a fool's hope, a desperate gamble in the face of overwhelming odds, but it was all we had. As I raised the board high above my head, a sense of determination flooded through me, driving back the encroaching darkness with a fierce resolve. I could feel the eyes of my friends upon me, their silent encouragement, lending me strength in the face of adversity. And then, with a primal scream that tore through the silence like a thunderclap, I brought the board crashing down upon the entity with all the force I could muster. The wood splintered and cracked upon impact, sending shards flying in all directions as the entity let out a deafening roar of pain and rage. For a moment, it seemed as though time itself had frozen in place, the air thick with anticipation, as we waited with bated breath to see if our gambit had paid off. And then, with a sound like the snapping of a thousand bones, the entity began to disintegrate before our eyes, its form crumbling to dust in the face of our defiance. With a sense of relief that bordered on disbelief, we watched as the darkness receded, leaving behind only the echoes of our victory. But even as we celebrated our triumph, a nagging doubt lingered in the back of my mind, a whisper of uncertainty that refused to be silenced. For we had glimpsed the true face of terror that night, a darkness beyond reckoning that lurked just beyond the edge of our reality. 
waiting patiently to reclaim its lost souls. And as we made our way out of the haunted manor, battered but unbowed, I knew that our ordeal was far from over. For the spirits that dwelled within those cursed walls would never truly rest. Their hunger for vengeance driving them ever onward in their quest to claim the souls of the living. And though we had emerged victorious, the scars of that fateful night would haunt us for the rest of our days, a grim reminder of the price we had paid for our curiosity. But even as the shadows closed in around us, I knew that we would never forget the horrors we had witnessed, nor the strength we had found within ourselves to confront them. And as we disappeared into the night, leaving the haunted manor behind us, I couldn't help but wonder what other terrors awaited us in the darkness, lurking just beyond the edge of our perception, waiting patiently to drag us down into the abyss. Hey guys, I've been itching to share this story with you all. It's been gnawing at me for weeks now, and I feel like I need to get it off my chest. So, here goes nothing. I'm what you might call a paranormal enthusiast. I've always been fascinated by the supernatural, the things that go bump in the night, you know? So, naturally I spent a lot of time poking around in antique shops and scouring the internet for old relics with a spooky vibe. A while back, I stumbled upon this little mom-and-pop antique store in the outskirts of town. It was the kind of place that looked like it hadn't been touched since the 70s, filled with dusty old knickknacks and faded furniture. But, nestled among all the junk, I found it, a beat-up old Ouija board. Now, I've seen my fair share of Ouija boards in my time, but this one was different. It was ancient looking, covered in weird symbols and scratches that looked like they'd been carved by hand. The shopkeeper told me it had been in his family for generations, passed down from one relative to the next. He even warned me that it was cursed, that bad things happened whenever anyone messed with it. But me being me, I didn't pay much attention to his warnings. To me, it was just another cool piece to add to my collection. So, I forked over a pretty penny for it and mm, took it home with me. At first, I treated it like any other artifact, just another weird thing to show off to my friends. But the more time I spent with it, the more I started to feel off, like there was something not quite right about it, you know. I started having these weird dreams, vivid nightmares that left me waking up in a cold sweat. And during the day, I swear I could feel something watching me, lurking in the shadows just out of sight. But still, I brushed it off as my imagination playing tricks on me. I mean, it's just a stupid board game, right? What could possibly go wrong? Little did I know. I was about to find out the hard way. So, there I was, with this creepy old Ouija board sitting in my study, taunting me with its mysterious aura. At first I tried to ignore it, to go about my life like nothing had changed, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I started spending more and more time with the board, just staring at it trying to make sense of the strange symbols etched into its surface. I even tried using it a couple of times just for kicks, but nothing ever happened. It was like the thing was dead, just a piece of wood with some fancy carvings on it. But still, I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something more to it, something lurking just beneath the surface. So. I started doing some research, 
digging into the history of Ouija boards and the occult. The more I read, the more obsessed I became. I couldn't get the damn thing out of my head. Couldn't stop thinking about what secrets it might be hiding. And the weirdest part was, I started to feel like it was calling out to me, like it wanted me to unlock its mysteries. I know it sounds crazy, but that's the thing about obsession. It creeps up on you when you least expect it, slowly but surely consuming you from the inside out. And that's exactly what happened to me. I became completely consumed by the Ouija board, spending every waking moment thinking about it, trying to decipher its secrets. I stopped going out with friends, stopped going to work. I was completely and utterly obsessed. But the weirdest part was, I didn't care. I would have given up everything, my job, my friends, my sanity, just to unlock the secrets of that damn board. Little did I know, I was about to unlock something far more sinister than I could have ever imagined. As my obsession with the Ouija board deepened, so did the strange occurrences around me. It was like the board was feeding off my energy, growing stronger with each passing day. At first, it was just little things, objects going missing, strange noises in the middle of the night. I brushed it off as a coincidence, convinced that I was just imagining things. But deep down, I knew there was something more to it, something sinister lurking just out of sight. I started to feel like I was being watched, like there were eyes on me at all times. I would catch glimpses of movement out of the corner of my eye, only to turn and find nothing there. It was like I was being stalked by some unseen force or a malevolent presence that fed off my fear. And then came the nightmares. Oh God, the nightmares. They started off small, just fleeting images that would vanish as soon as I woke up. But as time went on, they grew more vivid, more terrifying. I would dream of being trapped in a dark, suffocating void with no way out. I could feel something watching me from the shadows, something ancient and malevolent that wanted nothing more than to drag me down into the depths of despair. But still, I refused to give up my obsession. I was convinced that if I could just unlock the secrets of the Ouija board, everything would go back to normal. I spent hours on end conducting seances, trying to communicate with whatever entity was trapped within the board. And then, one fateful night, it happened. As I sat hunched over the Ouija board, my fingers resting lightly on a planchette, I felt a chill sweep through the room. The planchette began to move on its own, spelling out words in a language I didn't understand. I am here. It said I am always here. I should have been terrified, should have run screaming from the room, but instead I felt a strange sense of exhilaration, of power coursing through my veins. I had made contact with something beyond the realm of the living, and I was determined to unlock its secrets, no matter the cost. Little did I know, the cost would be far greater than I could have ever imagined. With each passing day, my obsession with the Ouija board grew stronger, consuming me from the inside out. I became obsessed with unlocking its secrets, with communing with whatever entity was trapped within its ancient wood. But as my obsession deepened, so too did the toll it took on my mind and body. I stopped sleeping, haunted by nightmares that left me gasping for breath, drenched in sweat. I would wake up in the middle of the night, convinced that something was lurking in the shadows, just beyond my field of vision. During the day, I would wander around in a daze, my thoughts consumed by the Ouija board and the secrets it held. I stopped eating, 
stopped taking care of myself. I was completely consumed by my quest to unlock the mysteries of the board. And then, there were the visions. Oh God, the visions. They started off small, just fleeting glimpses of movement out of the corner of my eye. But as time went on, they grew more vivid, more terrifying. I would see things, horrible, twisted things that no one else could see. Shadows would dance at the edges of my vision, whispering secrets that I could never quite grasp. I started to feel like I was losing my mind, like I was teetering on the edge of sanity. But still, I couldn't bring myself to let go of the Hiruija board. It had become a part of me, a twisted extension of my own psyche. I would sit for hours on end staring at it, trying to make sense of the strange symbols carved into its surface. And then, one fateful night, it happened. I was alone in my study, the Ouija board spread out before me, when I felt a presence in the room, a cold, suffocating presence that seemed to envelop me completely. I watched in horror as the planchette began to move on its own, spelling out words in a language I couldn't understand. And then, with a suddenness that took my breath away, I felt a searing pain rip through my chest as if something were tearing my soul apart from the inside out. I screamed, a primal guttural scream that echoed through the empty halls of my home but it was too late. I was lost, consumed by the darkness that had taken root within me. And now, as I sit here, penning these final words, I can feel the darkness closing in around me, can hear the whispers of the damned echoing in my ears. I am no longer myself, no longer human. I am nothing but a vessel, a pawn, in the game of forces far beyond my comprehension. So, heed my warning, dear readers, and stay far away from the cursed relics of the past. For once, you invite the darkness in, there is no escape. You are forever bound to its will, doomed to wander the shadowed halls of eternity, a slave to the very thing that destroyed you. I pray that you never have to experience the horror that I have endured, but if you do, remember my words and know that you are not alone. The darkness may consume us all in the end, but as long as there is hope, there's a chance for redemption. Stay safe out there, dear readers, and may whatever gods you believe in have mercy on your soul. I knew deep down that I had to end this nightmare, to break free from the grip of the Ouija board before it consumed me completely but despite my best efforts, I couldn't bring myself to destroy it. It was like I was under some kind of spell, unable to resist its malevolent allure. And then, one fateful night, it happened. I was alone in my study. The Ouija board spread out before me when I felt it, a presence, cold and suffocating, filling the room with its malevolent energy. I watched in horror as the planchette began to move on its own, spelling out words in a language I couldn't understand. I am here, it said, I am always here. I should have been terrified, should have run screaming from the room, but instead I felt a strange sense of exhilaration, a power coursing through my veins. I had made contact with something beyond the realm of the living. And I was determined to unlock its secrets, no matter the cost. But the cost, oh God, the cost was far greater than I could have ever imagined. As I sat there, my fingers resting lightly on the planchette, I felt a searing pain rip through my chest as if something were tearing my soul apart from the inside out. I screamed, a primal, guttural scream that echoed through the empty halls of my home. But it was too late. I was lost, 
consumed by the darkness that had taken root within me. And now, as I sit here, penning these final words, I can feel the darkness closing in around me and hear the whispers of the damned echoing in my ears. I am no longer myself, no longer human. I am nothing but a vessel, a pawn in the game of forces far beyond my comprehension. So heed my warning, dear readers, and stay far away from the cursed relics of the past. For once, you invite the darkness in. There is no escape. You are forever bound to its will, doomed to wander the shadowed halls of eternity, a slave to the very thing that destroyed you. I pray that you never have to experience the horror that I have endured. But if you do, remember my words and know that you are not alone. The darkness may consume us all in the end, but as long as there is hope, there is a chance for redemption. Stay safe out there, dear readers, and may whatever gods you believe in have mercy on your soul. Tawa, epilogue, a warning to the curious. To whoever finds this, heed my words. The Ouija board is not merely a game, not simply a tool for a communication with the dead. It is a gateway, a portal to realms beyond our understanding. And once you open that door, there is no going back. I have paid the ultimate price for my folly, my soul forever bound to the darkness that now consumes me. But perhaps my story can serve as a warning to others, a cautionary tale of the dangers that lurk in the shadows, waiting to ensnare the unwary. So take heed, dear reader, and beware the allure of the unknown, for in the end, it may cost you far more than you could ever imagine. A carnival came to my town, and me and my friends paid to play the Ouija board. Our souls ended up been taken by the unknown. I never believed in the supernatural. Ghost stories were just that, stories. But everything changed when the carnival came to town. It was a foggy October evening when the lights of the Ferris wheel pierced through the mist, casting an eerie glow over our small town. My friends and I, eager for a thrill, decided to check it out. The carnival of souls was unlike any other. Its faded banners fluttered in the wind, promising thrills and chills beyond imagination. We laughed and joked as we wandered through the maze of tents and attractions, the scent of cotton candy and popcorn hanging heavy in the air. That's when we stumbled upon it, the Ouija board attraction. It was nestled in a dark corner of the carnival grounds, its wooden surface weathered and worn. A sign above it proclaimed, Communicate with the Beyond, dollar ten per session. Intrigued, we pooled our money and approached it in a, the booth. A hooded figure emerged from the shadows, their face obscured by darkness. With a crooked smile, they welcomed us to the Ouija board experience. We took our places around the board, our fingers trembling as we placed them on the planchette. The hooded figure instructed us to clear our minds and focus on the spirits. With bated breath, we began to ask our questions. At first, nothing happened. We exchanged nervous glances, wondering if we had wasted our money. But then, ever so slowly, the planchette began to move. It slid across the board, spelling out words in a language that seemed ancient, otherworldly. We were mesmerized, our hearts pounding in our chests as we communicated with the unknown. But as the minutes ticked by, the atmosphere grew heavier, suffocating. The air seemed to crackle with energy, and a sense of dread settled over us like a shroud. Just when we were about to call it quits, the planchette jerked violently beneath our fingers. It spelled out a single word, stay. Fear 
gnawed at the edges of my mind. But curiosity compelled me to obey. And that's when things took a turn for the worse. The carnival lights flickered and died, plunging us into darkness. The air grew cold, so cold that I could see my breath misting before me. I could hear my friends whispering frantically, their voices trembling with fear. But before we could make a move, a voice echoed through the darkness, a voice that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere all at once. Welcome, my children, it said, dripping with malice. You have entered a realm beyond your understanding. Here, the rules of the living no longer apply. Here, you will play a game, a game with stakes far higher than you can imagine. I wanted to run, to flee from this nightmare, but I was rooted to the spot, paralyzed by fear. And as the voice spoke, a cold dread settled over me, like a hand squeezing my heart. We will play a game, the voice continued, and the winner shall claim a prize beyond compare. But beware, for the losers shall pay a price too terrible to comprehend. With a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, I realized that we had stumbled into something far more sinister than we could have ever imagined. And uh, as the carnival lights flickered back to life, casting long shadows across the ground, I knew that our lives would never be the same again. As the carnival lights flickered back to life, we found ourselves surrounded by a thick fog, obscuring our vision and muffling the sound of the world around us. Panic gripped my chest like a vice as I searched desperately for my friends in the swirling mist. But they were nowhere to be found. I called out their names, my voice trembling with fear. But all I heard in response was the echoing laughter of the unseen presence that lingered in the darkness. With each step I took, the ground seemed to shift beneath my feet, like I was walking on shifting sands. I stumbled forward, my heart pounding in my ears, until I came upon a clearing in the fog. There, illuminated by the sickly glow of the carnival lights, stood a twisted game board, unlike anything I had ever seen before. It was a labyrinth of winding pathways and hidden traps, each more sinister than the last. And at the center of it all stood the hooded figure from before, their eyes gleaming with a malevolent light. You have been chosen to play our game, they said, their voice dripping with malice, a game where the stakes are your very souls. My blood ran cold as I realized the gravity of the situation. We were trapped in a twisted nightmare, a game orchestrated by forces beyond our comprehension. And the only way out was to play along to navigate the treacherous maze and emerge victorious. With trembling hands, I reached for the game piece that lay before me, a small figurine carved in the likeness of a twisted, nightmarish creature. As I placed it on the board, the ground beneath me trembled, and the game board shifted and changed, rearranging itself into a new configuration. The hooded figure chuckled darkly as they watched us struggle to find our way through the maze. Each step we took seemed to bring us closer to danger, closer to the unseen horrors that lurked in the shadows. But as the hours passed and exhaustion began to take its toll, I realized that there was more at stake here than just our lives. We were pawns in a game played by forces far beyond our understanding and the only way to escape was to outwit our unseen adversary. With a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, I knew that our journey was far from over, and as I cast one final glance over my shoulder at the carnival lights, I prayed that we would find a way to survive the horrors that awaited us in the darkness. As we navigated the twisted maze of the game board, 
Each step brought new challenges and horrors. The air was thick with the stench of decay, and the shadows seemed to writhe and twist, taking on sinister shapes that whispered promises of pain and suffering. We encountered traps at every turn, pitfalls lined with sharpened spikes, walls that closed in on us with a sickening groan, and creatures that lurked in the darkness, their eyes gleaming with hunger. With each passing moment, the weight of our predicament pressed down on us like a suffocating blanket. But even amidst the chaos and terror, there were moments of respite, brief respites where we could catch our breath and gather our wits. We huddled together, our hearts pounding in our chests as we tried to make sense of the nightmare that had become our reality. And through it all, the hooded figure watched us with cold, unfeeling eyes, their laughter echoing through the darkness like a sinister refrain. They seemed to take pleasure in our suffering, in the desperation that drove us ever onward. But despite the odds stacked against us, we refused to give up hope. We pressed forward, driven by a fierce determination to survive, to outwit the unseen forces that sought to claim our souls. And as we faced each new challenge, we discovered hidden strengths within ourselves, courage that we never knew we possessed, resilience in the face of unimaginable horrors. With each passing moment, we grew stronger more determined to emerge victorious from this twisted game. But as the hours turned into days and the days into weeks, I began to fear that we would never escape this nightmare. The game seemed to stretch on endlessly, its challenges growing more twisted and insurmountable with each passing moment. And with each passing day, I could feel the darkness closing in around me, threatening to consume me whole. But even in the darkest moments, I refused to give up hope, to surrender to the despair that threatened to overwhelm me. For I knew that as long as there was breath in my body, there was still a chance. A chance to defy the odds, to overcome the horrors that haunted us at every turn. And with that thought burning bright in my heart, I pressed forward into the darkness, determined to reclaim the light that had been stolen from us. As we delved deeper into the twisted maze of the game board, the line between reality and nightmare began to blur. Time seemed to lose all meaning, stretching and warping like a taut rubber band on the verge of snapping. We encountered horrors beyond comprehension, monstrous creatures with twisted forms and eyes that burned with a malevolent light, traps that seemed to defy the laws of physics, and visions that haunted our dreams with their twisted imagery. But perhaps the most terrifying aspect of our ordeal was the toll it took on our minds. With each passing moment, the darkness seemed to seep into our very souls, poisoning us from within with doubt and despair. I could feel the tendrils of madness creeping ever closer, whispering promises of release from the horrors that surrounded us. And as the days turned into weeks, I watched helplessly as my friends began to succumb to the darkness, their eyes hollow and empty, their minds twisted and broken, but even amidst the despair, there were moments of clarity, brief respites where we could cling to the flickering light of hope that burned within us. We held on to each other, our bond stronger than ever, as we faced the horrors that lurked in the shadows. But with each passing day, that light grew dimmer until it seemed as though we were drowning in an ocean of darkness our souls adrift in a sea of despair. And then, just when it seemed as though all hope was lost, we stumbled upon a glimmer of hope. 
a faint whisper in the darkness, a promise of salvation. It was a hidden chamber tucked away in the darkest recesses of the maze, its walls lined with ancient runes and symbols, and at its center stood a pedestal upon which rested a small cell, ornate key. With trembling hands, I reached out and grasped the key, feeling its weight in my palm like a lifeline. And as I held it aloft, a surge of energy coursed through me, banishing the darkness that had threatened to consume us. But even as we celebrated our newfound hope, I knew that our ordeal was far from over. The darkness still lingered, waiting for the opportunity to strike once more. And as I cast one final glance over my shoulder at the twisted maze that had become our prison, I vowed to never stop fighting, to never surrender to the despair that threatened to overwhelm us. For even in the darkest of times, there is always hope, a flickering ember that refuses to be extinguished. No matter how fierce the winds of despair may blow, and with that thought burning bright in my heart, I pressed forward into the unknown, ready to face whatever horrors awaited us on the path ahead. Armed with the key we had found, we ventured deeper into the heart of the uh, twisted maze. Our resolve stronger than ever, the air crackled with the tension as we moved forward, each step bringing us closer to our ultimate goal escape from this nightmare. But as we neared the end of our journey, the darkness seemed to grow denser, pressing in on us from all sides like a suffocating blanket. Shadows danced on the walls, whispering secrets too terrible to comprehend, and the air was thick with the stench of decay. And then, suddenly, we found ourselves standing before a towering gate its twisted iron bars looming ominously overhead. With a trembling hand, I inserted the key into the lock, feeling the weight of our fate hanging heavy in the air. As the gate swung open with a rusty groan, we stepped through into a chamber bathed in an eerie blue light. At its center stood a figure cloaked in shadow, their eyes burning with a malevolent light. You have come far, my children, the figure said, their voice echoing through the chamber like a death knell. But your journey ends here. You have trespassed into the realm of the dead, and now you must pay the price. With a sinking feeling in the pits of my stomach, I realized that we had walked straight into a trap. We were trapped in a twisted game a pawn in a larger scheme, orchestrated by forces beyond our comprehension. But even as Feu fear gripped my heart like a vice, I refused to give in to despair. We had come too far to turn back now, to let the darkness claim us without a fight. With a cry of defiance, we charged forward, our hearts pounding in our chests, as we faced off against the shadowy figure before us. The air crackled with energy as we clashed, our wills locked in a battle of strength and determination. But even as we fought with all our might, I could feel the darkness closing in around us, threatening to swallow us whole. Desperation clawed at the edges of my mind as I struggled to hold on to hope to cling to the flickering light that burned within me. And then, just when it seemed as though all was lost, a miracle occurred. With a blinded flash of light, the shadowy figure before us crumbled to dust, dissolving into nothingness before our eyes. We had won. As we stood victorious amidst the ruins of our ordeal, I felt a sense of relief wash over me like a wave crashing against the shore. We had faced the darkness and emerged triumphant, our souls intact and our spirits unbroken. But even as we celebrated our victory, I knew that our journey was far from over. 
the darkness still lingered, waiting for the opportunity to strike once more. But as long as we stood together, united in our determination to never surrender, I knew that we could overcome any challenge that lay ahead. And with that thought burning bright in my heart, I turned my back on the twisted maze that had become our prison, ready to face whatever horrors awaited us on the path of dead. For even in the darkest of times, there is always hope, a flickering ember that refuses to be extinguished, no matter how fierce the winds of despair may blow. Hey, Reddit, I'm finally ready to share the chilling experience my friends and I had at the abandoned asylum last summer. Buckle up, because this is going to be a wild ride. It all started innocently enough. You know the deal, a group of thrill-seekers looking for a good scare. There were five of us in total. Me, Jake, Sarah, Mark, and Emily. We had heard all the stories about the old asylum on the outskirts of town. Tales of torture, experimentation, and restless spirits. Naturally, we couldn't resist the urge to explore it ourselves. The asylum itself was a decrepit, towering structure, looming ominously against the darkened sky. Its windows were shattered, its walls covered in graffiti, and its corridors whispered secrets of the past. As we approached, a chill ran down my spine, but I pushed the feeling aside, eager for the adrenaline rush that awaited us inside. We entered cautiously, our footsteps echoing off the cold, tiled floors. The air was thick with dust and the scent of decay. I could feel the weight of the building pressing down on me, suffocating and oppressive. But we pressed on, fueled by a mixture of curiosity and fear. The first few rooms we explored were relatively benign empty, save for broken furniture and peeling wallpaper. But as we ventured deeper into the asylum, things took a sinister turn. We stumbled upon a room that sent shivers down my spine. It was filled with rusted medical equipment, blood-stained tables, and chains hanging from the ceiling. The air seemed to grow colder, and I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. Sarah suggested we try to communicate with any spirits that might still linger in the asylum. She pulled out a Ouija board she had brought along, and we gathered around eagerly, our fingers resting lightly on the planchette. At first, nothing happened. We asked the usual questions. Is anyone there? Can you hear us? But received no response. Just as we were about to give up, the planchette began to move, slowly at first, then with increasing speed. The messages it spelled out were cryptic and unsettling. Words like pain, fear, and help appeared on the board, sending a chill through my bones. I could feel the tension in the air, thick and suffocating, as if something unseen was watching us from the shadows. And then, without warning, all hell broke loose. The lights flickered and dimmed, casting the room in an eerie half-light. The air grew icy cold, and I could hear the sound of whispers echoing through the halls. It felt like the very walls of the asylum were closing in around us, trapping us in a nightmare from which there was no escape. But the worst was yet to come. As we sat frozen in terror, a figure emerged from the darkness, tall and gaunt, with sunken eyes and a twisted smile that sent shivers down my spine. It moved towards us with an unnatural grace, its footsteps echoing off the walls like the tolling of a death knell. I wanted to run, to flee from this nightmare, and never look back. 
but my feet were rooted to the spot, paralyzed by fear and disbelief. All I could do was watch helplessly as the figure drew closer, its malevolent presence filling the room like a suffocating fog. And then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the figure vanished, leaving us alone in the darkness once more. We fled from the asylum in a blind panic, our hearts pounding in our chests and our minds reeling from the horrors we had witnessed. To this day, I can't shake the feeling that something evil still lurks within those crumbling walls, something ancient and malevolent, waiting patiently for its next unsuspecting victim. So, heed my warning, dear readers, and stay far away from the abandoned asylum. Trust me, you don't want to awaken the horrors that lie within. All right, Reddit, I know you're itching to hear more about what went down at that asylum. So, here's part two of our little horror show. After that encounter in the darkness, we were all shaken to the core. But curiosity, or maybe just sheer stupidity, got the better of us. And we decided to press on. We split up into pairs, each taking a different wing of the asylum to explore. Jake and I headed down a long, narrow corridor that seemed to stretch on forever. The air was thick with the smell of mildew and decay. And the walls were covered in strange markings that looked like they had been made by clawed hands. Every step we took seemed to echo endlessly, as if the very walls were whispering secrets to each other. As we made our way deeper into the asylum, we stumbled upon a series of small, cramped cells. Each one was empty, save for a rickety bed and a small window covered in grime. But as we peered inside, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched, that there were eyes lurking in the shadows, watching our every move. Suddenly, Jake let out a gasp of horror and pointed to the wall behind me. I turned to look and felt my blood run cold. Scrawled in blood-red letters were the words, They're watching, repeated over and over again in a twisted, manic handwriting. It was enough to send a chill down my spine, but we pressed on, determined to uncover the secrets of the asylum. We stumbled upon a series of locked doors, each one more foreboding than the last. But as we searched for a way to unlock them, we heard a sound that made our blood run cold. The sound of laughter echoing through the halls like the mocking laughter of a madman. We turned to flee, but the laughter seemed to follow us, growing louder and more deranged with each passing moment. I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end as we raced through the corridors, desperate to escape the unseen presence that pursued us. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the laughter stopped. We emerged from the asylum, breathless and trembling, but alive. But the experience had left its mark on us, a shadow that would haunt us long after we had left the asylum behind. So, there you have it. Read it, part two, of our little adventure in the abandoned asylum. Stay tuned for more, if you dare. All right, buckle up, Reddit, because here comes part three of our chilling tale. After our harrowing encounter with the laughter in the darkness, we regrouped outside the asylum, shaken but determined to press on. We could feel the weight of the building pressing down on us, suffocating and oppressive. But we pushed aside our fear and ventured back inside. This time, we decided to explore the basement, a decision that would prove to be our undoing. The air grew colder and damper as we descended into the darkness. The only sound, the echoing drip of water from unseen pipes. As we made our way through the labyrinthine corridors, 
we stumbled upon a series of holding cells, small cramped spaces with iron bars and heavy locks. The air was thick with a scent of decay, and I could feel the weight of the past pressing down on me like a leaden cloak. But it was what we found in the last cell that truly chilled me to the bone. There, huddled in the corner like a frightened animal, was a figure shrouded in darkness. Its eyes glowed with a malevolent light, and I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end as it stared at us with unblinking eyes. I wanted to run, to flee from that nightmare, and never look back. But something, call it morbid curiosity, call it sheer stupidity, held me in place, rooted to the spot as the figure drew closer, its movements slow and deliberate. And then, with a sudden burst of speed, it lunged at us, its hands outstretched like claws. We fled in terror, the sound of its laughter echoing in our ears like a cruel taunt. But the horror was far from over. As we made our way through the darkness, we stumbled upon a series of strange symbols scrawled on the walls, symbols that seemed to pulse with a malevolent energy. And as we looked closer, we realized with a sinking feeling that they were not just random markings, but a message from something ancient and evil that had long lain dormant within the asylum's walls. We fled from the basement, our hearts pounding in our chests and our minds reeling from the horrors we had witnessed. But the whispers in the darkness followed us, taunting us with promises of pain and suffering to this day. I can still hear those whispers echoing in the depths of my mind, a constant reminder of the horrors that lurk within the abandoned asylum. So heed my warning, dear readers, and stay far away from that cursed place. Trust me, you don't want to awaken the darkness that lies within. All right, Reddit, here comes part four of our spine-chilling saga. Brace yourselves because things are about to get even more disturbing. After our terrifying ordeal in the basement, we were all on edge, our nerves frayed and our minds racing with fear. But despite our better judgment, we couldn't shake the feeling that there was still something lurking within the asylum, something dark and malevolent that hungered for our souls. We decided to split up once again each of us venturing into different parts of the asylum in search of answers. Emily and I found ourselves in a series of dimly lit hallways that seemed to stretch on forever, the walls covered in peeling paint and faded wallpaper. As we made our way deeper into the asylum, we stumbled upon a room that sent shivers down my spine. It was filled with rows of empty beds their metal frames rusted and twisted with age. But as we peered closer, we realized with a sinking feeling that they were not empty at all. Each bed was occupied by a shadowy figure, their faces twisted in agony and despair. I could feel the weight of their suffering pressing down on me, suffocating and oppressive. It was as if their pain had seeped into the very walls of the asylum, staining them with a darkness that would never fade. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the figures vanished, leaving us alone in the darkness once more. But their screams still echoed in my ears, a haunting reminder of the horrors that had taken place within those walls. We pressed on, determined to uncover the truth behind the asylum's dark past. But with each step we took, the air grew thicker, the shadows darker, until it felt like we were drowning in a sea of darkness. And then, just when we thought things couldn't get any worse, we stumbled upon a room that sent chills down my spine. It was filled with rows of glass jars, 
each one containing a twisted, malformed creature that seemed to writhe and squirm in agony. I could feel bile rising in my throat as I looked upon those tortured souls, their eyes wide with terror and pain. It was as if they were begging for release, their silent screams echoing in the darkness. But before we could react, a voice whispered in our ears, a voice filled with malice and hatred. It spoke of unspeakable horrors, of pain and suffering beyond imagination. We fled from the room in terror, the echoes of that sinister voice following us as we raced through the corridors, desperate to escape the nightmare that had become our reality. And as we emerged from the asylum, gasping for breath and trembling with fear, I knew with a sinking feeling that our ordeal was far from over. So heed my warning, dear readers, and stay far away from that cursed place. Trust me, you don't want to unleash the darkness that lies within. All right, Reddit, here we are, the chilling conclusion to our tale of terror. Hold on to your hats, because things are about to get downright disturbing. After our harrowing encounter with the twisted creatures in the asylum, we were all but ready to throw in the towel and hightail it out of there. But something, call it morbid curiosity, call it sheer stupidity, kept us pressing on, determined to uncover the truth behind the horrors that lurked within those crumbling walls. We found ourselves in a series of winding corridors that seemed to twist and turn endlessly, leading us deeper and deeper into the heart of the asylum. The air grew colder and damper with each step we took, the darkness pressing down on us like a suffocating blanket. And then, just when we thought things couldn't get any worse, we stumbled upon a room that sent shivers down my spine. It was filled with rows of cages, each one containing a twisted, monstrous creature that seemed to leer at us with malevolent eyes. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest as I looked upon those abominations, their grotesque forms contorted with pain and rage. It was as if they were waiting for us, eager to tear us apart with their razor-sharp claws and jagged teeth. But before we could react, a voice whispered in our ears, a voice filled with madness and despair. It spoke of unspeakable atrocities, of pain and suffering beyond comprehension. We fled from the room in terror, the echoes of that sinister voice following us as we raced through the corridors, desperate to escape the nightmare that had become our reality. But the horror was far from over. As we made our way through the darkness, we stumbled upon a series of strange symbols scrawled on the walls, symbols that seemed to pulse with a malevolent energy. And as we looked closer, we realized with a sinking feeling that they were not just random markings, but a message from something ancient and evil that had long lain dormant within the asylum's walls. And then, just when we thought things couldn't get any worse, we stumbled upon a chamber unlike anything we'd ever seen before. It was filled with strange, otherworldly artifacts, ancient relics of a time long forgotten. But as we approached, we felt a strange energy emanating from within, a power that seemed to reach out and ensnare us in its grasp. We could feel our minds unraveling, our sanity slipping away as we succumbed to the darkness that lurked within. And then, with a deafening roar, the chamber collapsed in on itself, burying us beneath a mountain of rubble and debris. And as the darkness closed in around us, I knew with a sinking feeling that we would never escape the horrors that lurked within the abandoned asylum. So heed my warning dear readers, and stay far away from that cursed place. 
Trust me, you don't want to awaken the darkness that lies within. For once it awakens, there is no escaping its grasp. I never believed in curses, spirits, or anything remotely supernatural. Growing up, I was the skeptic, the one who scoffed at ghost stories and horror movies, dismissing them as nothing more than elaborate fantasies designed to scare the gullible. But all of that changed on my 17th birthday. It was a typical summer day when the package arrived at my doorstep. I remember the excitement coursing through me as I tore open the neatly wrapped box, eager to see what awaited me inside. My parents always had a knack for finding unique and quirky gifts, but nothing could have prepared me for what lay within that innocuous-looking package. Nestled within a bit of tissue paper was a vintage doll unlike any I had ever seen. Its porcelain face was frozen in a hauntingly lifelike expression with glassy eyes that seemed to follow me wherever I went. Its frilly dress was faded and threadbare, hinting at its age. Yet there was an undeniable air of elegance and sophistication about it. But what truly caught my eye was the miniature Ouija board clutched in its delicate porcelain hands. The letters and numbers were meticulously painted onto the wooden surface and a small planchette rested beside it, ready to glide across the board at the slightest touch. I couldn't contain my excitement as I held the doll in my hands, turning it over to examine every intricate detail. It was unlike anything I'd ever received before, and I couldn't wait to show it off to my friends. That night, as I lay in bed, the doll sitting on the nightstand beside me. I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that had settled over me. It was as if the doll's glass eyes were boring into my soul, watching, waiting. I chalked it up to nerves, the excitement of my birthday catching up with me, and drifted off to sleep. But my dreams were plagued by visions of the doll. Its porcelain face contorted into a sinister grin as it beckoned me closer, whispering promises of power and control. I awoke in a cold sweat, the echo of its haunting laughter still ringing in my ears. As the days passed, strange things began to happen. Objects would go missing, only to reappear in the most unlikely of places. Shadows seemed to dance at the edge of my vision fleeting and elusive, and every time I looked into the doll's glassy eyes, I could swear I saw a flicker of movement, as if something lurked behind them, waiting to be unleashed. But it wasn't until I found myself drawn to the miniature Ouija board that I realized the true nature of the doll's curse. With trembling fingers, I placed my hands on the planchette, feeling a strange energy coursing through me as it began to move of its own accord. Letters spelled out messages in a language I couldn't understand, words that sent shivers down my spine. The spirit of a vengeful child, trapped within the confines of the doll's porcelain prison, reaching out to me from beyond the grave. I tried to resist to push the doll away and rid myself of its sinister influence. But it was too late. The spirit had latched onto me, sinking its claws into my very soul, and I was powerless to stop it. As the days turned into weeks, I watched helplessly as the doll's influence spread like a cancer, twisting and distorting everything it touched. My friends grew distant, their smiles forced and hollow. My family became strangers, their eyes filled with fear and suspicion. And all the while the doll sat on my nightstand, its glassy eyes gleaming with malice, a silent reminder of the darkness that lurked within me. I had become nothing more than a puppet, 
dancing to the tune of a malevolent force that cared nothing for the lives it destroyed. And as I looked into the doll's unblinking gaze, I knew that I was doomed to serve its twisted desires for all eternity. The days blurred together in a haze of fear and confusion. I felt like I was trapped in a waking nightmare, unable to escape the suffocating grip of the doll's curse. Every night, I would lie awake, listening to the whispers that echoed through the darkness, urging me to do unspeakable things. The doll's voice, once sweet and innocent, had become twisted and distorted, a cacophony of malice and madness. I tried to resist, to cling to the last shreds of my sanity, but it was futile. The doll had sunk its claws deep into my soul, feeding off my fear and despair like a parasite. It started small, innocuous even, a misplaced item here, a broken dish there. But as the days passed, the incidents grew more frequent and more violent. Objects would fly across the room with no apparent cause, shattering against the walls with deafening force. Shadows seemed to lurk in every corner, whispering malevolent secrets that sent shivers down my spine. And then there were the dreams, nightmares so vivid and horrifying that I would wake up screaming, drenched in sweat, my heart pounding in my chest. I saw things in those dreams, terrible things that I could never unsee. Faces twisted in agony, bodies contorted into grotesque shapes, and always, always, the doll was there, watching with those glassy eyes, a silent witness to my descent into madness. But the worst part was the whispers, the constant insidious whispers that filled my mind with thoughts of violence and destruction. They told me things, horrible things, that I could never repeat out loud. They told me to hurt myself, to hurt others, to do things that no sane person would ever consider. And try as I might, I couldn't escape them. They followed me wherever I went, a relentless barrage of darkness that threatened to consume me whole. I knew I had to break free from the doll's curse to rid myself of its influence once and for all. But every time I tried to fight back, it was like trying to swim against a raging tide, futile and exhausting. I was drowning in a sea of madness, and the doll was the anchor dragging me down to the depths of hell. And as I looked into its unblinking gaze, I realized that there was no escape. I was doomed to serve its twisted desires for all eternity, a slave to the darkness that lurked within me. Each day felt like a battle, a struggle to maintain some semblance of normalcy in the face of overwhelming darkness. But no matter how hard I fought, the doll's curse continued to tighten its grip around my throat, choking the life out of me. I could feel myself slipping further and further into the abyss, losing touch with reality as the lines between dreams and waking life began to blur. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, until they were all I could hear, a constant barrage of torment that gnawed at my sanity like a ravenous beast. I tried to reach out for help, to confide in someone, anyone who might understand what I was going through. But the words caught in my throat, suffocated by the suffocating weight of shame and fear, I was alone, so utterly and completely alone, trapped in a prison of my own making with no hope of escape. And then, one fateful night, the doll spoke to me, not in whispers or dreams, but in a voice so clear and commanding that it sent shivers down my spine. It told me things, terrible things, that made my blood run cold. It told me about the darkness that lurked within me, the darkness that had always been there, waiting to be unleashed. And it told me what I had to do to set it free. I 
I tried to resist, to push back against the doll's demands, but it was no use. Its influence was too strong, too powerful to ignore. So I did what it asked. I did the unthinkable, the unforgivable, and in doing so, I sealed my fate. I became a vessel for the doll's malevolent spirit, a pawn in its twisted game of vengeance and destruction. And as I looked into its unblinking gaze, I realized that I was no longer human. I was something else, something dark and terrible, a monster wearing a human skin. But even as I embraced my newfound power, I couldn't shake the feeling of emptiness that gnawed at my soul. I had sacrificed everything for the sake of the doll. And in return, it had given me nothing but pain and despair. I was trapped in a nightmare of my own making, a prisoner of the doll's curse, with no hope of escape. And as I looked into its glassy eyes, I knew that my torment would never end. As the days turned into weeks, I became a slave to the doll's twisted desires, a puppet dancing on its strings, powerless to resist its commands. The whispers grew louder, more urgent, driving me to commit acts of unspeakable horror in the name of the doll's vengeance. I watched in horror as my friends and family became pawns in its twisted game, their lives torn apart by my actions. I tried to fight back, to regain control of my own mind, but it was no use. The doll's influence was too strong, its hold on me unbreakable. I was a prisoner in my own body, forced to watch helplessly as the darkness consumed everything I held dear. And through it all, the doll watched with those glassy eyes, a silent witness to my descent into madness. But even as I carried out its bidding, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being used, manipulated by forces beyond my comprehension. The doll had become more than just a cursed object. It was a living, breathing entity, a manifestation of all the pain and suffering that had ever existed in the world. And as I looked into its unblinking gaze, I realized that it was feeding off my misery, growing stronger with each passing day. I was nothing more than a vessel for its malevolent spirit, a pawn in its endless quest for vengeance. But even as I surrendered myself to its will, a small part of me rebelled against the darkness, clinging to the last shreds of my humanity with all the strength I could muster. I knew that I had to break free from the doll's curse to reclaim my own soul before it was too late, but the road to redemption would be long and fraught with peril and I knew that I would have to face the darkest corners of my own mind if I ever hoped to escape the doll's clutches. And as I gazed into its unblinking eyes, I knew that the battle for my soul had only just begun. Days turned into months, and months turned into years as I struggled to break free from the doll's curse. Each day brought new challenges, new horrors to face as I fought to reclaim my soul from the darkness that threatened to consume me. But no matter how hard I tried, the doll's influence remained as strong as ever, its whispers echoing through the empty corridors of my mind like a twisted symphony of madness. I watched helplessly as the world around me crumbled, my friends and family torn apart by the doll's insatiable thirst for vengeance. But through it all, a glimmer of hope remained, a small spark of humanity that refused to be extinguished. I knew that I had to confront the doll to face the source of my torment head on if I ever hoped to break free from its curse. And so, one fateful night, I gathered my courage and entered the room with the doll lay waiting, its glassy eyes gleaming with malice. I could feel its presence, a dark and suffocating presence that seemed to fill the room with an icy chill, 
but I refused to back down. I refused to let the doll's curse control me any longer. With trembling hands, I reached out and grasped the doll's porcelain body, feeling its cold, lifeless surface beneath my fingertips. And then, with all the strength I could muster, I smashed it to pieces, shattering its delicate form into a thousand shards of porcelain and wood. For a moment, there was silence, a deafening silence that seemed to stretch on for eternity. And then, with a sound like thunder, the curse was broken, the darkness lifting like a shroud from my mind. I collapsed to the ground, exhausted but triumphant. The weight of the world finally lifted from my shoulders. As I looked around at the wreckage of the doll's prison, I knew that I had finally found peace, that I was free from its curse once and for all. But even as I breathed a sigh of relief, a small voice whispered in the back of my mind, a reminder that the darkness would always be there, lurking just beyond the edge of my consciousness, waiting for the chance to strike again. And as I gazed into the shattered remnants of the doll's form, I knew that the battle was far from over. But this time, I was ready. This time, I would fight with all the strength I had, no matter what horrors awaited me on the other side.